Hey, it's Rav. Welcome to Everyday Investor, the hottest investment show in the world. That's right. I said it. I don't care who knows it. This show is designed to help us all grow our money. You see, we take our time, we go to work, we get a paycheck in order to provide. And going to work is a blessing. But imagine a world where you wanted to work a little less um, and then money made you money so you could spend that time with the things that mattered most to you, spending it with family, friends, engaging in a purpose greater than yourself. That is what Everyday Investor is all about. That's what we've been trying to teach over the last 17 years, teaching us how money makes money. To do that today, we're going to be talking to my good friend. Wait for it. We'll be right back. Coming up, we talk to my good friend Ian Zabo, and te he teaches us how to make money investing in a purpose-built 12-plex. You know, I've worked my way up from condos all the way up to you know four units, five units. It's it's an evolution, and it's it's something that you can look at now that the, there's built-in equity in these properties, and the owners typically want to get out. The mortgage world has changed. Has your advice? Are you looking for a modern approach to your mortgage planning process? Advice tailored to your unique, ever-changing circumstances? Whether you're upsizing, downsizing, purchasing, or refinancing, the Kyle Ford Mortgage Team works with individuals and companies to custom tailor the right mortgage product for you. Working with a wide selection of lenders, we're here to serve our clients and help them achieve their real estate and retirement goals. Contact the Kyle Ford Mortgage Team today. Canada's mortgage choice. It's Rav. Welcome back. Before we talk to my brother from another mother, Ian Zabo, we're going to find out what's happening in the world of stocks with Omar Khan. Over to you, Omar. Thanks, Rav. Omar Khan here, guys, with Data Trading. Uh, weekly market recap. Uh, bond market is indicating that inflation is not as bad as we thought. Now, the reason this is happening is because in the last year, year and a half since the pandemic started, People have been buying goods and not services, but goods, things, you know, like uh, cars, home renovations, not vacations, not, uh, you know, restaurants, uh, not dining out experiences, excuse me, none of this stuff. What they're doing is they're focusing on goods. Now, what's happening is those price of those goods have been really, really high because supply has also been constrained. But now that people have done, are done purchasing those goods, they're going to focus on purchasing uh, services, you know, restaurants, uh, vacations, think of stuff like that. That's lowering bond yields and then lo thus lowering inflation. And, and the reason the market's doing well because of that, it's pushing an all-time high, is because now it's no longer concerned about or not as concerned about inflation going up, therefore interest rates going up. Anyways, that's why the market's at an all-time high. Uh, back to you, Rob, and we'll see you guys next week. Take care. Thanks, Omar. Always great to learn from you. Ian Zabo, my friend. How are you? I'm excellent, brother. How are you doing? I miss you, man. I miss you too. Big virtual COVID hug. Yes, yes. It's uh, it's been a, you know, it's been a challenging uh, year and change, and here we are in the uh, the spring, and hopefully uh, there's light at the end of the tunnel. I mean, what are your thoughts on it? I know you have a, a beautiful wife and two young girls, and uh, you know, with my son and my daughter, um, it's it's been challenging, you know. Yeah, it's, it's been challenging mood swings up and down, you know, kind of feeling sorry for yourself at one moment and then feeling grateful for everything you have and the love that you have and friends and which is most important. I, I just look at it now as what's the most important thing. And it's, it's come back to the original thing that we talk about all the time is friends and family and, you know, strip everything else away. That's what we have. So, yeah, yeah, no, no, it's true. It's true. But um, that hasn't stopped you from building your business and uh, making money um, in order to enjoy uh, family and friends. You know, I, I always say you don't need money to be happy, but it sure does help um, to be able to be hospitable and to be able to give benevolently. And, you know, so what have you been up to in the last, you know, 12, 16 months? Um, we're going to be talking about uh, making money in multifamily, a purpose built uh, 12 flex that you're working on, but that's just one of many. What's uh, Ian Zabo uh, been up to? Well, uh, no one's seen this coming. And uh, I've, I've done about 15 projects during COVID, which has been extremely challenging. Um, I've learned uh, a lot about myself and my team as, as well as 
how to give back and how to get things done in unconventional ways. So uh, I think my Tim Hortons bill for last year was probably close to eight or $900. Like if you need supplies at Home Depot, coffee and donuts go a long way. The billing department, coffees and donuts, like, so it's been challenging. It's been stressful at times. Like, why am I doing this? And, and then other times it's like, I, I'm fortunate to keep everyone employed and keep everyone busy. And we have a small wall right now, but it, it's been great. I'm grateful for the opportunity and the challenge. Well, listen, we've been friends for a long time. Um, you uh, have uh, flipschool.ca where you were teaching people. I mean, well, you were flipping your own homes and, and doing very well. And then people wanted to, you know, wanted you to nurture them. So you opened that. You, um, you know, went to the States and filmed a TV show. You, you know, you've been doing a lot of things and uh, you became a realtor to be able to, um, you know, buy and sell your own properties and then other friends' properties as well for investment purposes and so now you've done 15 deals and are these all kind of uh buy and holds or are you uh flipping some of those as well yeah I, i've done a whole whack of uh fix and flip during the pandemic because i didn't know what was going to happen and we got hit with three or four projects as soon as it started and, and i was like we need to turn and burn because i don't know what's going to happen with financing i don't know what's going to happen with rental market and so I turn and burn on a bunch of them. I wish I didn't now, you know, your worst mistake is always selling and not keeping. So lesson learned once again, but uh, I did a couple of new builds, which were nice. And we're looking at keeping a couple of those. We just finished some and it's, it's, it's been great. It's been, it's been a lot of fun. And you know, you're all over GTA, but um, you live out on the East end. Um, where, where, where are you? Pickering, Ajax, where are you? I'm just in uh, North Whitby. And with the, uh, with the cost of, um, you know, materials um, and, you know, hard to even get those materials, um, you've still been seeing some nice profit margins? Yeah, 100%. We've, we've seen profit in all properties. Some of them were a little bit lower than others because of the unexpected 400% increase in lumber and, and the building department not being able to get things done as quick as um, they could have before. So that was a bit of a, bit of a challenge. But I've also started looking at other situations where people have been off. And if you've owned a house in the last five years, it's pretty well doubled. So there's a lot of opportunities to reinvest and in, in buy bigger multifamily buildings and not worry about lumber prices and materials and building permits. You know, buying from the end user that, that wants to retire and, and adding value that way. And um, you do, a, you know, all these projects you do on your own. Now you've started to bring in um, some money partners. Is that right? You've, yeah. You're now welcoming money partners into your projects? Yeah. I, I've realized over the last six to eight months that I have a lot to offer and I have, I have a lot to give and a lot to, to learn. And who am I being selfish, not sharing that with other people? And it's, it was a bit crazy when I started looking at what I've done in the last 20 years and how I can share it. Yeah. No, no, it's great. I mean, I'm not, Rav's not an Ian Zabo. I don't know how to, I mean, right from even the purchase. I mean, you've taught me way back when, you know, Rav, talk to the mailman, talk to the hairdresser. Uh, not that you, not that you would talk to one often, but, uh, no, you know, <laughs> but, but you've, you've, you know, just, just even in terms of how to acquire a property. I remember when you were doing your, you know, um, I think there were like $250,000, uh, uh, purchases that were kind of under uh, managed. Um, you would buy that, you would uh, do a basement suite or an extension and you'd turn around and sell these for 400,000 all day long and you'd be making 7,500 grand. But the, the biggest, not the biggest, but one of your strategies um, across the board was the money's made in the purchase. So, 100%. you know, you, there, and, then, and then the way you do things, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, your ceilings and, uh, you know, the spaces that you use. I mean, it's hard to find a savvy investor, businessman. Um, that's an artist as well, Ian, and you're all those Thank things. You. Um, so I'm glad now you're allowing little old Ravs to, uh, to, get, in, <laughs> to get into your projects. Now, are these, um, so, so Ian, for example, we're going to take a look at the numbers here, but you're doing a, a purpose built, like you're making a 12 plex. Uh, a 12 unit, uh, you know, kind of building here. Rav um, puts up some of the money, writes a check. Ian does all the work. Um, is this uh, what's called a debt deal that will work out a eight to 12% kind of uh, uh, return on an annualized basis? Or um, is Rav sharing in the equity if I go on title or how does it work? 
Yeah. So with the bigger projects, like the 12 plex that uh, it's, it's about, it's about 20 years old It's purpose built. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I got the deal on a contract. I'm closing the deal no matter what. And uh, I bring on investors and we set up a corporation. And in that corporation, we offer dividends and shares depending on the amount of money you're investing in it. And it's, it's a hands-free investment. And, but what I'm saying is like, how do you work out the returns? Is it a fixed percentage or is it part of the profits? It's, it's a 50, 50 split typically. So oh, really? It, yeah. So the particular one we're talking about today, the 12 plex is probably 1.7 in profit over, over the next, and this is estimated obviously over, over the next five years. So that is split with, with, with money partners and investors. With your investors. Okay, so you're doing an equity deal where, yeah. where, where Rav writes a check and um, if it makes no money, which I don't think you've ever done a project that didn't make money, but if it made no money, Rav makes no money. I get my principal back. Um, but if it makes a gazillion dollars, Rav makes a gazillion dollars divided by two, depending on you know how much money that I put in. No, that's great. Uh, that's great. And so is this the direction you're going? And, and you know you want to start doing multifamilies, 12 plex, 15, 20 plex, whatever the case is? Yeah, I'm, de I'm definitely going down that road. It, it, to me, it's an evolution of what I've done for the last 20 years. You know, I've worked my way up from condos all the way up to, you know, four units, five units. It's, it's an evolution and it's, it's something that you can look at now that the, there's built-in equity in these properties and the owners typically want to get out. They're, they're mismanaged. They're, they're, not, they're not the greatest investments from day one. They're, they're a business that needs some love and some care. And with our in-house staff of our you know, property manager and my construction experience and my team, it's quite easy. It's actually a lot easier than, than building stuff from the ground up. It's a lot easier than rehabbing properties. It's a little bit more control and, and uh, we're having some fun with it. And, and explain to the viewers, Ian, what does it mean purpose built, um, you know, 12 plex? What, what does it mean yeah. purpose built? So purpose built is the fact that they're actually building it as a multi-unit building. So it's concrete construction or it's block construction. Um, it's not just a house that's been retrofitted. Everyone knows how to do duplexes and triplexes now. And these are typically wood construction properties. And there's a lot of noise and tenant complaints and issues that you can get with this. And when you have a purpose built building, usually you're getting higher rents. There's a higher value. There's less problems, uh, structural issues, um, noise complaints. It's, it's a way better product. Okay, great. Well, listen, let's take a quick break and let's come back and look at the numbers. We're talking to my friend, good friend, uh, Ian Zabo. We're talking about how to make money investing in a purpose-built uh, multiplex, in this case, a 12plex. Don't go anywhere. Everyday Investor continues in a moment. At Theta Training, our goal is to help you achieve financial freedom by teaching you the foundations of trading stock options. Join our growing community. Learn through our live streamed weekend course or develop your skills at your own pace online. Understand how the stock market works and how you can use the options market to earn additional income, achieve financial freedom and live life on your terms. Let us help you build your empire. Hey, it's Rav. Welcome back to Everyday Investor. We're learning how to make money investing in purpose-built multiplexes. I'm talking to my good friend Ian Zabo. Before we continue on with the numbers, let's find out what's happening in the world of mortgages with Kyle Ford. Over to you, Kyle. Thanks, Rav. This week, I want to talk about taking a mortgage into our retirement. For many years, Canadians have been preached that in order to live a comfortable retirement, the first thing we need to do is pay off the mortgage. This comes from our parents' generation who went through much higher interest rates, such as 18, even 20%. The question becomes, in today's ultra-low interest rate environment, should we be taking a mortgage into our retirement? This is always going to have a lot to do with your personal risk tolerance, other income, living factors. But the question, the question I like to ask is, if we have the ability to borrow at 2% and lend at 10, 11, 12%, does it make sense to take a mortgage into retirement? and use the spread to create additional income. This is something that I'm seeing more and more Canadians turning to, and I'd be happy to have a review with you and your family to discuss if this is an option that might work well. As always, don't hesitate to reach out to myself or the rest of the Kyle Ford Mortgage Team. Thanks, and have a great day, Rav. Thanks, Kyle. Always great to learn from you. 
Ian Zabo, thank you so much for being on the show with me. Uh, you're always a, an inspiration. You're like me. Uh, we love our uh, family, our wives, our kids, people. Uh, love to keep things very simple. Um, yes. uh, I, I don't know about you. I don't have a choice. Uh, I'm not that. Uh, I'm not that deep or complex. So I need it. I need things to be simple. Uh, me too. A, <laughs> definitely me too. I went to school um, in a short bus, so I definitely need it simple. I, and I love that story. I mean, I don't think we have time to get into it, uh, but you know, you went to school on a short bus. Um, uh, for those that uh, are, I would say, exceptional kids, but at that time, perhaps, you know, uh, society had different uh, viewpoints. But then later, when you uh, showed everybody, hey, uh, you know, this is me, Ian Zabo, you actually bought a short bus to drive yeah. around, and, you know, do podcasts out of and put kids in and have fun with it. Do you still have that? Yeah, I do. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's the coolest short bus around. Like, I'm a little bit biased, but I still, a portion of what I make every year goes towards helping at risk youth and kids with disabilities and just show them that you don't have to have everything figured out to make it work. Love it. Love it. Um, okay. So walk us through, um, this is a live project that you're doing. Um, you're going to continue to do uh, projects. You're open to uh, people like Rav, um, you know, being uh, uh, lenders on the project, investors on the project. We don't have to do anything. Uh, just write a check. Do we go on title um, or just become part of the corporation? Yeah, it'd be, it'd be a corporation and, and shareholders. You'd get share, shares and you'd be on title as well. The, the corporation goes on title. Exactly. Yeah, so, so indirectly we are. Okay, so this, this particular um, project is where? It's in Oshawa. It's a purpose-built 12-plex. Okay. Oshawa. And how old is it? It's 20 years old. And who did you get this from? You got this under contract. This is from the original, the original owner. It was, it was, it was from a, a realtor that had it under contract as a pocket deal. And then I purchased it as an assignment. So this it. So, you know, investors starting out, it's really hard to get those type of deals and the money is in the deal, like you said before. So it's, you got to know people to get things done. No, that, well, that's why I was asking, well, how did you get this? Because yeah, these, these make money and um, they don't come around that often. So um, a realtor that you know and built a relationship with, I, I'm assuming. Uh, it was through, it was through a, a friend that's an investor. So a realtor sent it to a friend of mine. A friend of mine got under contract. I happened to call my friend. He's like, hey, you want a deal? I'm like, yeah, I want a deal. There's an assignment fee that was attached to it. So um, it, it's not as easy as it looks. I know this deal for right now is, is going... People are trying to buy for three million, and we have it under contract for two point seven. So, two point seven. So, yeah. So, so that's the purchase price, right? You, you're, you're buying this for two point seven million. Correct. Okay. And um, it's a twelve plex, and so what you, what you're doing is you're going to add value to this. Um, is it fully occupied right now? No. So the, the good story is the gentleman that owns it now. He's in his eighties. He has two units that are completely rented. He's I asked him, how come they're not rented out? He's like, well, if, if they're 55 or over and don't have cats or dogs or kids, I'll let them. And I just put a sign in the window. I'm like, okay. And then there's another, another unit that uh, is occupied as well that, that needs to be uh, a little bit of rentals and rented out. So, so, so sorry, of the 12 units, how many are vacant right now? Three. Three are vacant. And then, yeah. and then what do you do over time, uh, Ian, with the nine that are already occupied. Is your goal to go into each one and renovate them? 100%. Part of my initial budget is there's $75,000 for, for tenants, for cash for keys, if they decide that they want to leave, if, if it's not working out there, they want to relocate. And the real purpose of buying these multifamily units to, is to increase the rents, increase the, um, the value of the properties, and ultimately, ultimately get your expenses down so that uh, you can bring the numbers up and increase the value and refinance and pull capital. And so, sorry, what'd you say? $7,500? 75,000. 75,000 for what? Cash for keys for tenants. Stop. What do you mean? Yeah, Explain a that. lot of times, a lot of times tenants aren't happy with new landlords. A lot of times tenants don't want to stay and they need an incentive. So we so hope you're them saying, up. you're saying if I was living in that 12 plex yeah. and Ian would love for me to, um, if I could, 
uh, to move because um, you're going to renovate that and either I move back or, uh, or somebody else moves in, obviously at a higher rate. Um, but if I didn't want to, you would incentivize me? 100%. Sometimes what we'll do is we'll fix up the new units, stage them so they look really nice and say, I know you've been living in a, in a property that's not the greatest, your kitchen's not great, you know, your stove's not the greatest. Would, would you like to move into this unit? Well, I can't really afford it. Well, what if we offered you $5,000 to actually move into this unit and pay the new market rents? Okay, so you would offer me $5,000 to be able to do that, but you said $75,000. We have $75,000 in the budget for the whole building throughout the period. Got it, got it, yeah, okay, okay. So there's nine units. If you have to use you know, um, that, you know uh, the, that money, then you would use the eight grand per person or whatever to be able to do that. And that's why Ian Zabo is Ian Zabo because you know not everybody's gonna think about that, right? They're gonna be hold on to this and get the lower rent and wait for one day that they move out, but you're incentivizing and you're, you know, you're, you're doing it in a win-win situation. You're not kicking anybody out. It's like, hey, listen, let, let me put you in a, in, a, in, a, in a better opportunity and here's a, a few bucks for your troubles. Okay, so we're buying this for 2.7 million. Now, we're not, you know, Ian, uh, his corporation is not raising 2.7 million to, to do the whole thing. You're not paying uh, cash. We're gonna have a mortgage on this, yes? Correct. So what's the uh, down payment on this then? So the down payment is is a million fifty thousand. Yeah, including including closing costs. No, the total cost for everything is one point two five. One point two five. Okay, so one point two five, and then uh, that's that's what we need for down. And then uh, what about um, your your reno? What's the budget for your renos? So I have an allocated hundred thousand dollars for renos. Um, most of the units are really good. I haven't seen all of them, um, but most of them are really good. And that goes towards, you know, new kitchens, adding laundry suites, fixing up some of the utilities to make it more affordable. Um, but there's not a lot of initial capital. It's more, it's more just change of use and getting the building up to par. Okay. So a hundred thousand dollars. So really 1.35. Yeah. Uh, it's included in the 1.2. Oh, that's included in the 1.2. Included in the 1.25. Okay. So. 2.7 is the buy, and then the total we're in for is 1. Point what? 1.25? 1.25, yes. 1.25 is everything in there. Okay, so that's, uh, let's call us investors. All right, so how long, Ian, does this take to turn around? Okay, so... I usually do a five-year term. I've done it as quick as six to eight months. I don't like saying that because people get a little weird and scared, but it's, it's a five-year term. So it's a five-year play. And in five years, what is this $2.7 million uh, property worth? Okay, so my goal is to get the rents up um, $3,000 a month. So for every $100, we get the, we get the rent up. It equals $29,000 in appreciation or value. Um, and the goal is to get them all up so that the end value would be 3.7 million. And what you're talking about is when you, when you put a few bucks into reno, now we can charge higher rents. We take that rent. It's part of our, you know, operating income. Um, we take, we take that operating income, we divide it by what's called the cap rate and that boosts up the um the value of the entire property so this is not like out on a whim you know that if i can get these rents up to three thousand per unit times 12 we divide by the cap rate this is going to bring this all the way up so what was your final number then three point three point seven three point six to three point seven three point seven okay so basically what you're saying is it's a uh, one million right three point seven um, you bought for the, 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 the 2.7, so you're making the, uh, the 1 million, but you're only in for 125. Correct. And we, we also, that doesn't include like the, the mortgage, mortgage pay down or forced depreciation or. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Somebody's paying down, um, uh, 12, uh, families are paying down the mortgage. Obviously it's increasing. You're in Durham. I mean, conservatively, we always use three, 4%, but we know in Durham, it's, not that. What's it been the last few years in Durham, year after year? 
been bananas, like over, over 10, but I use 4%. So we're like a hundred and seven, hundred and eight thousand dollars uh, based yeah. a forced depreciation. And then mortgage pay down is $39,000 a year. So you have that as well. And then Ian, the, the, the goal here is not to sell it. We're Correct. going to, we're going to refinance, pull the money out, pay back the investors. And now they have something that's just giving them cash, cash flow. Exactly. And a lot of times investors, once they get in, they start realizing, Hey, this, this is a great investment. We refinance, we put, let's say 600,000 or 800,000 in an account. And then they want to get it into the other business that I have is flipping and creating quick money, not long money. Okay. So with your flip projects, you also are now inviting uh, investors in only if they're doing the bigger deals. Okay. <laughs> so if, if you, it's part of your family of investors, if, the, if, if uh, Rav's in something like this, then also Rav gets privy to the quick ones where we're doing the flips. Uh, and that's just, you know, we can get, uh, we can put some cheese on the burger, uh, at McDonald's, uh, you know, it, from those. It, it's hard to eat equity, right? And, and, uh, Ian, what is kind of, do you have a ballpark, what you're trying to achieve for the investors on an annualized return, like 15%, 20%, 30%, what's your kind of, you know, or every project's different. Every project's different. Like normally, normally it's anywhere from 20 to 30. What yeah. I've been consistently doing for 20 years. Like I can't- On an annualized. Annualized, yeah. Yeah. But if we, if I pull this off, which I've done many times before in a quicker period, it could be 50, 60, 80%. It yeah. really depends on, it depends on the timing and the tenants that are there now. And Okay, so basically it's a five-year play. I can double my money or double and a half on these, on these projected numbers. Um, you know, that's kind of the return on investment. Um, we, we you're, you'll pull out when it's ready, but you're thinking five years could be earlier. You'll pull out, um, uh, money's out of this to pay back investors. Now they have something that's cash flowing. Uh, what's the minimum? So on something like this on a 2.7 buy, um, what's kind of a minimum that you're looking at for someone to get involved? Um, typically I like to find one partner or two partners that can do the whole deal. Um, yeah. but I have broken up in different sections before like $240,000 sections for 10%, depending on, on yeah. that. But it, it's usually typically easier to have less people involved in, in a project this scale, like a larger project, I would be doing more. Okay, great. And, um, you know, we always talk about, uh, uh, worst case scenario downside, um, what, what would you say could be a worst case scenario in a situation like this? Uh, worst case scenario, I couldn't, maybe couldn't get any tennis didn't decide to leave or they don't want to leave. Usually there's a 2% people leave uh, every year in the, this type of situation. And we would be stuck probably making somewhere around the 800,000, $900,000 mark with the, for, with uh, the mortgage pay down and appreciation. So that's so worst like, case. Yeah. So you're still, it's still a positive return. hundred percent. And listen, time flies when we're having fun. Uh, you know, just in general, words of advice for the viewers when it comes to uh, COVID, family, mental health, investing. What kind of pops in your mind? What's the one, two things that, uh, that you would want to say to the viewers? Well, I think a lot of people get confused with, with this type of investing. And they think it's for doctors and lawyers and dentists, which it is. And we have clients that do that. But if you've owned a house in Durham region or GTA in the last five years, your, your, your profits doubled. You have, you have access to go to the bank and borrow banks money and use that and invest in the passive projects where you're hands free. An expert that does this for 20 years can get this stuff done with the team, pre built in equity and profit. It, I just think a lot of people should look at it from a different way and try being the bank instead of being the bank's customer. Love it. Thank you, Ian Zabo, my buddy. I can't Thanks wait so till uh, we can, uh, connect in person, sit on the porch, talk spiritual things, talk uh, family, yep. uh, you know, talk uh, business and investments. Thank you so much for being on the show with me. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. And thank you guys for watching. Uh, without you, we would not have a show. Make sure you tune in next week. Same place, same time. Honey, I love you. I'll be home soon. Bye everyone. Mm -hmm.